Hi guys, so I'm back in Denmark. Hi guys, so I'm back in Denmark and you might not even know that I left. Basically I was in Poland for the last month, I went there for Easter and then I kind of stayed. It was a little bit of a crazy story, basically my father was diagnosed with uh, Rona. The day after I came there, so we were on obligatory 17 days isolation quarantine and yeah, then I had two weeks after quarantine to hang out with everyone. I am way too lazy to wash my hair today. So, this is what I'm doing. Can you just appreciate how good my makeup looks like? I am trying Gnostics products. I got those three. I got in the nude. Then I got the bronzer, sun kissed. And then I also got the highlighter, the bubbly babe. Today I used in a nude blush just as the eyeshadow. I don't know if you can tell and then I use sun kissed as a both bronzer and a blush all over my face and then the bubbly bubble as like the yeah highlighter and on my nose and stuff so but I'm I'm really happy how it looks like actually so and for the dry shampoo if you're brunette I so recommend using the brown one for dark hair. I always use the regular one and obviously it left white powder in and I had to shake it really a lot and stuff. And this one is already brown. So as you can see, there is no white stuff happening in there, which is, which is great. I, I really recommend for us brunettes. And now I'm gonna take you outside, show you amazing Danish weather. It's freaking raining. So that's per usual, so I'm gonna show you how the weather is like it's not crazy raining right now but it's wet everywhere but i need this picture just of my face on some clear backdrop here is the gray wall but i'm not sure if i want to do the gray wall yeah or i want to do this like the tree i don't know It's the next day and I'm about to go get tested for Rona. Tests are for free here in Denmark and you kind of get them regularly. And I always get them when I come back from Poland just to make sure before I go back to work and like see my friends here. So that's what I'm gonna do right now and it's obviously raining, obviously. So I'm gonna take you with me for a walk because actually the testing site closest to my house is at the university campus. So I'm gonna show it to you here. I'm at the university park, I just got tested, but this park is so cute. It's at the university campus, as you can see, but I, I love parks and ducks and all that stuff. But it's so crazy because in May, every year, there's this huge event over here called Capsulaza. Basically, it's one big party for the entire day. And uh, people gather even at 2 a.m. to get good spots. Um, and everyone is just drinking the entire day. I went there for the first time, I think, at 3 p.m. and everyone was already wasted and it's crazy even. But this is today, there are some people kayaking. It's such a peaceful place. And I'm going to go grocery shopping now, I think. And I'm gonna see you when I'm back home. I'm going to make a salad now, Nishwas salad if there are any french people here i'm really really sorry but i'm just going to show you what i need obviously lettuce then eggs tomatoes olives and the tuna you can really tell you know and then i'm going to make a dressing which i'm going to show you now three spoons of uh, olive oil one spoon of wine vinegar it's like if I was making a portion or something, you know. One teaspoon of mustard, and I just use any type of creamy mustard. The recipe says Dijon, but I had this one, and it's going to work as well. Squeezing in some lemon. One clove of garlic. I love garlic so much, guys. It's insane. <laughs> a little bit of water for consistency. <laughs> some pepper and some salt. 
And now just to shake it all together, basically when you have oils and water and mustard and stuff, you cannot just mix it, it's not gonna connect. So I like to have this closed containers to do that. So that's all nice and creamy. I'm going to boil eggs now, chop everything, and I'm going to see you when I'm eating, which is gonna be exciting. This is the final result, so excited! And then I also got some garlic bread, basically mixed olive oil with garlic and put over the bread. And that's the final result, my lunch for today. Today we have summer, basically the weather is so nice, it's so sunny, which is why I'm in a freaking tank top and it feels great. I have to do some readings for university, I actually have an exam coming up in three weeks so I have to catch up with readings and do some studying and stuff so I think I'm gonna go outside and do that and now it's time to study yay <laughs> I talked about that in that video about a quarter life crisis just basically studying right now during corona with schools being closed with libraries being closed it's just not as enjoyable and it sucks because I really like my masters overall, you know, being specialized in something, but I just hate that I have to do everything in my room, so I'm gonna go outside today. Damn it. Now it's dinner time, obviously food. I know I don't look like that, but I eat quite a lot and I cook quite a lot. And today I'm making kind of a Greek inspired dinner. So I've already marinated my chicken. I cut it in half, I always cut it like that. So I have more spices, less meat, cause it's thinner sort of thing. And I used the paprika, garlic powder, oregano and rosemary and also salt and pepper just on the meat beforehand and I'm gonna put it in the fridge now to marinate I'm going to boil some potatoes and make some homemade tzatziki which I'm about to show you basically I'm taking cucumber, cut it in half, taking out everything from the inside so it's less watery then shred it on the shredder, then leave it for a while with the salt to make sure that the water gets away then I put in some garlic and some Greek yogurt, a little bit of olive oil salt and pepper in the fridge and that's basically it I don't get why people buy store-bought tzatziki or like you know fake tzatziki in the grocery store it's so easy to make it just doesn't make any sense and then I'm going also to make a salad and just olive oil with some lemon and some block of feta because I love feta cheese so much so much the potatoes are boiling and it's time to get my meat fried Anyway, basically what I do is that I never marinate meat with the oils and everything beforehand before I feel it because I think it can dry up the meat. So right before I'm going to put it here on the stove, I'm just taking some uh, olive oil, soy sauce and a lemon and I'm just taking the meat and sort of put it off in the sauce. And now just throw it on a pan. And this is what final result is like. As you can see, chicken, obviously fried, and uh, potatoes, tzatziki. Here's what, as I said, salad. I put those tomatoes mainly for coloristic purposes, so it looks more lively. And then we have feta cheese, which I love so much. And by the way, this amount of tzatziki, not enough. I'm gonna eat like five times more, but I just needed to look at aesthetic for the thumbnail. So this is sort of what we have. 
I also got this wine and it's my favorite wine here in Denmark from the cheap wines and it's the cheapest wine in Aldi. German wine also, but I like it a lot. I always buy this one, it's semi-sweet, so not for everyone, but you know, it's nice for the summer days. A little bit of a fun fact, probably you guys not know, I mean for sure you don't know. I have a little bit of connection to Greece, maybe not super strong connection, but a little bit. Basically my mom lived there for a year when she was 21. She was an au pair for this one family for nearly a year. So um, then she ended up moving back to Poland obviously with my father and I happened. But when I was a baby she would sing me lullabies in Greek. I know it goes like Kunya, Kunya Bella, na 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 na. <laughs> so I know this little by like that, and she knew some Greek word connected to like babysitting, so she could say how the swings are like or slides, certain foods, so that she knew that stuff. Up to this day, she's still in touch with that family where she was an upper too. So uh, we went there to Athens to visit them, I think, when I was a child once, and they came to visit us once in Poland. And my mom still every once in a while chats with them, and my small, <laughs> three tiny hometown in. In Poland I mean it is a small town but we had two Greek restaurants over there going up so whenever there was a family event birthday or anything we always went for Greek food and I think maybe that's also partially why I like it so much right now because I'm kind of you know grew up on it in a certain way I know I don't really have any subscribers followers from Greece but if I do I really love your country also, I guess the people who are watching this right now actually like me and like watching my videos since you are here. I'm just gonna tell you something funny because it is kind of funny and partially pathetic. But there is this one person. There's this one person subscribed to me only to dislike my videos and I find it it's a little bit annoying, but it's also kind of funny. It messes up a little bit with my perfectionism, you know, because majority of my videos are you know not that watched, like less than 200 views. So they have like usually like 10 likes or something like that and there's always this one dislike making it 92% and really like it annoys me like with perfectionism but also I'm like wondering about this person you know if it's one of my exes which is pathetic obviously but then what if it's a complete stranger who just subscribed to me to just like all of my videos for just not liking me it's like which one would be worse? I, I don't know. But it's also a little bit weird because when I started making YouTube videos, I knew that there might be some people writing some negative comments, but I thought, okay, if I'm not doing anything scandalous, not having some scandalous opinions, probably the one is gonna bother to comment or dislike or something. But you know, you learn quite interesting stuff about people by being on YouTube. You don't see that in the comments, basically. YouTube has this thing where they um, kind of put on hold the comments which could be potentially inappropriate. Sorry, my battery died and um, I ate my food, obviously finished it. Now I'm restraining here with my wine and I figured let's just, you know, keep on chit-chatting about it. So basically the thing about the comments is that YouTube sort of, it's kind of weird technically because when people comment inappropriate stuff, I still get notification about the comment and I see it. It's just that it doesn't get published, it's sort of on a review so I can like accept it and then it goes officially like, so you can see it but I still see those comments and sometimes there are messages of just people typing that I'm a whore or that there was some like angry guy in Poland saying that like my citizenship should be taken away and I don't know people just are weird and especially that I have such a small channel you know like I'm not big or anything but there's just something like that in people to spread hateful comments and at the beginning it was getting to me because YouTube is still a bit like Instagram or Facebook to me. Like I would get notification of the comments and then you wake up in the morning and you get basically a message that someone thinks you're a ho. But then over the time, I think I had to distance myself emotionally, like from YouTube a little bit. And that's why sometimes I take a break. And before I was, okay, I need to make video every Sunday, like I promised and it's so important. And over time I felt, okay, if I want to, take two months break that last summer when I was in Poland. I didn't do any videos for two months because I was back in Poland with my family and when I'm back home I'm not really good with making videos. I don't have my setup there and it's not the same with my family running around. And I think for anyone on YouTube starting YouTube it's important to remember that you must distance yourself emotionally a little bit, appreciate 
the nice comments and all the nice people and also like I see you guys like I probably if you're watching my videos still you kind of like me so I see you guys I see your nice comments and positive messages and I really appreciate them and they definitely put a smile on my face and I do my best to ignore the negative ones but they still come sometimes I think this is such a random rant but I really like making those videos getting a little bit more personal with you guys and connecting with you a little bit more on a personal level Ooh. But I think I'm going to end this video here and I just want to let you know for those of you who are watching my videos regularly, liking my videos, leaving positive comments, I see you, okay? I still see you and I think that's why I keep on, you know, going with YouTube for you guys, for people who are actually nice to me. So um, I want to thank you very, very much for being with me. And uh, if you want to talk with me about anything, there's my email in my description below. I actually was texting with some of you guys. I mean, not like texting. But some of you sent me like a really sweet email and I replied. And I think, you know, it's nice to also talk to you guys and see that you're actual human beings there. Um, and uh, I, I hope you have a very, very wonderful day and I hope to see you again in one of my videos. Bye bye.